I'm... I'm fine. Okay. Um, hey, Ada. Yeah? It seems like there's something wrong. Do you want to talk about it? it? Sometimes it helps to talk about things. <sighs> okay. My... My dad lost his job two weeks ago. <gasps> oh, Ada! And then my mom had her hours cut at the library. My parents seem really worried. I'm sure they'll figure something out. That's what I thought too, Clara. I thought it would be fine. But now they told me that I... I... I have to give up my swimming lessons. I'm so sorry, Ada. It's just... It's just... A, we are going to learn the butterfly stroke and... You're a good swimmer, Ada. You'll learn the butterfly stroke someday. But how will... I know I'm doing it correctly. I remember when my mom lost her job back when the hospital closed. But she found another job eventually. I just can't stop thinking about it. What if we run out of food? What about Todd's college fund? Well, I do have a little trick you could use. When I've got a worry that won't go away, I call a good friend and we go for a walk by the creek. <laughs> Is that why you and I walk by the creek almost every day? Well, <laughs> I do worry a lot. How about the next time you can't think of anything else but worries, you give me a call. It's nice walking with you, Ada. It's so peaceful. I see what you mean. Being out in nature really helps. No matter how big the worry, God is way bigger. God is all around us. And that makes the worries seem a little smaller. And if you don't believe me, just ask Mr. and Mrs. Robin. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Robins. Are you worried about being birds? <laughs> What'd they say? They said... No, we're pretty happy being birds. You try it. Hey, cattails! You ever worried about being cattails? <laughs> What'd they say? They said, we're doing great. <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Creek, are you worried about being a creek? What'd he say? <laughs> He's fine with it. <laughs> hey, Miss Clover, do you have worries? Oh, I bet you don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, she doesn't. <laughs> Good morning, Covenant Campers. How is everyone after our first night camping in the great outdoors? It's shown us what we're really made of, Cheddarfield. It helped that we could see the church from here, though. Hey! Hi, Mimi. Enjoy the bake sale. Hmm, bake sale. All right, everyone. Today, we'll be hiking even further into the wild to see more of God's glory. Huh, Chet, why aren't we just going to church to see God's glory? It's right there. You'll see, Jax. Everyone grab your gear and meet me and my mom over by that fallen tree in five. Okay! okay. <sighs> Seriously, we're gonna get to see God's glory today. I didn't read that anywhere on the agenda. If it's not a church, what does God's glory look like? Maybe God's glory will be like uh, a castle. Why a castle, Otto? They always talk about the kingdom of God, and kingdoms have castles, so maybe it's a super beautiful castle. The church is super beautiful, and it's easier to get to. What if God's glory is a big shadowy cloud? Oh, that doesn't sound glorious. Sounds dark and a little scary. And yet, Jaxosaurus Rex, God came to Moses in a cloud that wrapped around an entire mountain, which is definitely glorious. Just a few hundred feet more, everyone. I think I know what God's glory will look like. It'll be a blinding light. Blinding doesn't sound like much fun. There's nothing blinding in the church. God appeared to Moses as a blinding light and fire. Well, 
whatever it looks like. Hope we get there soon. This is starting to get more difficult. <laughs> uh. mm. Whew. I appreciate the assistance, Jackson. Whew. I'm still exhausted from that climb. It's all right. Okay. Is everyone ready to see what God has in store for us? It isn't what I expected at all, but it really is glorious. Yeah, God surprises you sometimes. What do you think, Jax? We... we don't have to go back to church right away, do we, Chet? No, we can stay and enjoy it for a while. Uh, enjoy what? What's happening? Uh, seriously, what did we find? trips. <laughs> a field trip to the zoo, no less. And what a stroke of luck that you and I are field trip buddies, Adelphia. I can't wait. <laughs> oh, we better catch up to the rest of the group. Miss Cashbeard said to stay together. <laughs> wow. This monkey exhibit is so interesting. Uh, I suppose, Adelina. I suppose. But hey, wouldn't you rather see something truly extraordinary? Like, what? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the reptile house? The reptile house? We can't go there. It's not on Miss Cashbeard's schedule. But think of the educational opportunity, Ada. Reptiles are fascinating. But Miss Cashbeard said we have to stick together. We are sticking together, Ada, as field trip buddies. Besides, as the most responsible kid in class, it's your duty to come along and keep me out of trouble. Well, <laughs> you really think I'm the most responsible kid in class? <laughs> it certainly isn't me, Ada. It certainly isn't me. Oh, look, we're at the reptile house. How did we... But we can't go in. The sign says it's closed for cleaning. Nonsense. There's a perfectly good side entrance over there. Whoa! Who would have guessed that one button would release every reptile in the house? <gasps> what do we do now, Victor? <clears throat> now? Oh, now we get in huge trouble, Ada. The entire field trip. We ruined the entire field trip. What? Just because they had to shut down the whole zoo and everyone had to go home early? Hmm. I've never gotten in trouble like this. Are there rules for what happens? Well, from personal experience, there will definitely be consequences. It will go well beyond being put in a timeout, I can tell you that much. This is terrible. We're naughty kids now. Everyone must be so mad at us. Our parents, our teachers, God! Whoa, 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 hey now. God doesn't think of us as naughty kids, Ada. We just got a little carried away and made a little huge mistake. The important thing is that we learn from it and do better next time. So, we're not in trouble forever? No, 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 no. Trouble doesn't last forever. If it did, I wouldn't be allowed out of the house. Trust me, I've had to learn a lot of lessons like this. A whole lot of lessons. Just a ton of lessons from my mistakes. Lessons upon lessons upon lessons. <laughs> one night. And when he spoke to Jesus, Nicodemus had many questions about the kingdom of God. 
Can you imagine going to see Jesus one-on-one -on -one and getting to ask him questions? Oh, I don't think I could. I'd be too shy to ask anything. You totally could, Clara. He's a people person. Very approachable. Well, I would like to ask him what it was like to preach in front of so many people. I'd want to know what his favorite miracle was. I bet it was walking on water. I've actually got a detailed 15-part question I want to ask him. The first part is about... I'd ask Jesus what eternity is like. Um, why would you ask that? Oh, because during worship, Pastor Donna said that we'd live in the kingdom of God for eternity. And I asked myself, Monty, what's eternity like? And I said, well, Monty, eternity is like forever. And then I asked, well, what's forever like? And then I said, well, forever is like eternity. And then I said... Monty, we get it. So that's what I'd ask Jesus. That's an easy one, Monty. <laughs> eternity is a really long time. Like a million years, but longer. Like a hundred million years. No, a billion years. No, a million billion years. No, I don't know if that helps, Otto, since you can always keep adding to a number. You make a good point, Clara. What do you think it's like? Well, I think eternity is like a river. It's always happening, and it keeps going and going. So us living with Jesus for eternity is, is like we're on a wonderful river with no end. Yeah, but rivers do end. <laughs> Picture eternity like a river, because I'd wonder when it ends and where it started, too. Well, how do you see it, Ada? Well, I think it would be like a feeling. Like a warm, happy, loving feeling. And the feeling is around you and in your heart and everywhere. And it keeps on feeling like that. Does anyone have some crayons or something? I still don't think that really describes eternity. I know. It's hard to imagine. Maybe eternity with God is too big for us to imagine. Huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Or I'd ask Jesus if birds can swim. Some birds can swim, Monty. Like penguins. Great. Cross that one off the list. <laughs> wait to give my report. Report? I mean, our homework for today. Homework? Yeah. Remember we had to interview someone from the church community. I interviewed Janitor Jerry. I spoke to Pastor Pete. Ah, yes. I, uh, I definitely interviewed my great aunt Marjorie. Oh, that must have been easy, Victor, since you live with her. <laughs> Incredibly easy. In fact, why don't we all share our interviews and see whose was the easiest? Well, Pastor Pete told me about having to decide between becoming a pastor or a professional skydiver. Ah, uh-huh. And, uh, what did he choose? Um, being a pastor. Hmm, interesting twist. Otto? Janitor Jerry told me that in his spare time, he helps with a theater group that performs Bible stories. They tour around in a bus. In a bus. Got it. And Adelphia, who did you interview? I spoke with Myrtle. Myrtle? The lady who plays the pipe organ? We talked about how Myrtle first came to the church. Because of her lifelong interest in pipe organs? No, actually, it all started when she was in prison. Like pipe organ prison? No, like prison prison. Really? Yeah, when she was younger, she made a bunch of bad decisions and wound up in prison for a few years. Oh, I make bad decisions all the time. Yours don't involve stolen cars. No. No, they do not. But how did she go from prison to being the church organist? Well, she started attending worship in prison and, um, found what she was looking for. Oh, yes. She found pipe organ music. No, it was Jesus. She said, I kept making bad decisions because I was really lost until I found Jesus. It was like I'd been thirsty for something my whole life, and I'd finally found that living water. 
But if she was thirsty, why didn't she just steal a water bottle? She wasn't thirsty for water. Myrtle was thirsty for Jesus' love. And when she found it, her life changed forever. And then what happened? Oh, she joined our church and discovered her calling to play the pipe organ. Wow, that's some story. What did your great aunt Marjorie say when you interviewed her, Victor? Oh, uh, basically all of that. A uh, skydiving janitor involved in theater who found Jesus thirst quenching love after stealing a bus. You know, that sort of thing. Um, are you copying other people's life stories? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? Do you think it would be obvious if I did? The bishop is visiting next week? Yes, that's it. My moment has arrived! So you gonna tell us what this is about, Victor? Well, I could tell you. Or better yet, I could show you. Wow! Where did you get all that vegetable oil? I found it. Or rather, it found me. What's it for? Well, we all heard Pastor Pete's sermon this morning. Samuel anointed David with a small horn of oil, which filled him with God's spirit, correct? Yeah, that sounds about right. And now, when the bishop visits our church, I'm going to get her to anoint me with 40 gallons of oil. I'll practically be swimming in the spirit of the Lord. Wow, the bishop agreed to anoint you? No, I said I will get her to anoint me through trickery. Uh... But... God chose David to be anointed. If God chose you, why do you need to trick the bishop? Listen, Clarabelle, I've been sitting on this barrel for over a year. I will be anointed with or without your help. No, no, I'll help for safety's sake. Ha! Now you're talking. Okay, is everything set? Everyone know their part? You got it, Victor. When the bishop gets here, I'll greet her warmly and ask for her autograph. While I tie this rope around her ankle. And her next step will tip the barrel over, anointing me with 40 gallons of oil and God's spirit. And then I'll become king or president. It's something. Good morning, everyone. Roxy, where's the bishop? Ooh, bad news, Victor. The bishop won't be making it today. She had to reschedule. See you inside. Oh, okay. Uh, minor setback. Let's take down the barrel and we'll... Whoops. <laughs> My oil. Why did this happen, Lord? Did you not provide this oil with which to anoint me? Victor, I don't think it works like that. David was chosen because God saw he had a good heart. So God could also probably see that you were planning to trick the bishop. Wait. God sees through my tricks? Well, yeah, Victor. God sees who we are inside and out. I'm all right! Mmm. Oily. Hello, everyone. I'm afraid I have some very sad news today. What is it, Roxy? Well, when I arrived this morning to set up for Sunday school, I found that Hannibal Hamster, the class gerbil, passed away last night. <gasps> what? Oh, no! Hannibal Hamster, no! I'm truly sorry. I know this is hard for all of you. Victor's gonna be so sad. He was the one who donated Hannibal Hamster to the Sunday school. He named Hannibal Hamster. He loved Hannibal Hamster. Oh, dear. I didn't know. Didn't know what? I'm very sorry, Victor. But Hannibal Hamster passed away last night. Hannibal Hamster? 
My Jibba? I know he meant a lot to you. Where's his body? Janitor Jerry is going to bury him by the edge of the woods. I'll check to see if he's already left. Victor, we're really sorry. Yeah, Hannibal Hamster was a great gerbil. <sighs> he was. And he shall be remembered. Poor Mr. Fuzzler will be so lonely now. I didn't even think of Mr. Fuzzler. All right, let's continue with Sunday school. Victor, if you need some time, we understand. I don't need time. Victor, you're clearly upset. I must be strong. I must stay hopeful and positive for all of you. I am the cornerstone of this Sunday school. Victor, you can have hope and still be sad. Do you want a hug, Victor? I'm fine. I am completely fine. And even if I'm not fine, I will be fine eventually. So why should I waste time crying about my beloved gerbil now? Where's Hannibal Hamster? Oh, hey there, Montgomery. A very sad thing has happened. Sad? You see, Hannibal Hamster has passed away. Passed away? <gasps> But, but I, I loved him. I know. I loved him too. Why are you crying? I can't. I'm too strong. Jesus, Jesus cried. He's strong. He got me there. <laughs> Leave it to Monty. <sighs> All part of the healing process. Oh my goodness! Uh, Clara? Who's that kid waving at us? It's Freddy! I see. And who is this Frederick fellow? He's my friend from school. I gotta say hi. It's not every day you see someone from school outside of school. Very well. I will use this time to go get our disc. Hi, Freddy! Uh, that's a neat kite! Thanks. This is the best kite flying field in town. What are you doing here, Clara? Oh, this field is right beside my church. You go to church? I do! Cool. So... What exactly is church? You really don't know what a church is? I mean, I've seen lots of churches before. I just have no idea how they work or what they do. Is that your church over there? Yeah. Wow, I don't think I've ever met anyone who didn't know what a church is. Well, now you have. So, what is church? Well, it's a Christian place of worship. Interesting. And who are Christians? Oh, well, uh, Christians are people who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Cool. So this Jesus, does he live in town? Uh, oh, no. He was born 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. Oh, sorry. From how you said it, I, I thought he was still alive. Well, he is alive. He died for three days, but then he came back. Wow. He came back to life? How does that work? You know... I'm not sure I'm qualified to explain all this. And is he still alive today? Or did he come back to life and then die again? Or, or does he do it constantly? Uh, too many questions? <laughs> uh, Clara? Clara! I had to brave many obstacles, but I've retrieved the disc. I can't talk! I have to tell Pastor Donna I'm quitting church! I'm not cut out for this! Quitting church? <laughs> Clara, what do you mean quit church? Well, Freddie had all of these questions about our church. Who's Jesus? How is he alive? What does it mean? I want to tell him about Jesus, but 
What if I answer wrong? I'm just a kid, Victor. Hey, Clara, are you all right? Wow, that is a lot of stained glass. Oh, no, it's Freddy. I've got to go hide in the coat rack. The coat rack is not the answer, Clara. It's not? No, let's just talk to him, and we'll answer any questions he has about Jesus together. But what if we don't have all the answers? I think that's okay. Plus, Pastor Donna's office is 30 feet away. Hey, Clara, your church is really nice. Thanks, Freddy. Um, we could show you around. Okay. Okay.